everybody, it's Christine Bertram, and I'm coming to you live from the Hive here in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, on a Sunday afternoon stamping session. <laughs> We're gonna be doing the Let's Just Stamp card class today, and it features the Love of Leaves stamp set. This is a class that I do in conjunction with Diane Bogenhagen, and she teaches the in-person version and I teach the online version. <laughs> There's only so many hours or days in a year. <laughs> Hi, Ellen Brover. And so we tag teamed it and we designed the cards together and then I prep and kit for the online version and then she preps and kits for the, the in-person. So if anybody is local to me here, and is interested in signing up for this class, it's still um, up ahead. It's coming up on Tuesday, September 21st. Hi, Susie from Illinois. Hi, Faye from Virginia. Uh, so she will be doing it live in person in the Hive on Tuesday the 21st at 6 p.m. And it, you just need to let me know like today <laughs> if you would like to sign up because she needs to know how many kits to make up and she hasn't done that yet. Hi, Sandy Wicklander. And so today I have, hi, Anne from Vermont. Uh, hi, Julie Bierschbach. Thanks everybody for sharing. I so greatly appreciate you sharing me with your friends and family. Hi, Randy from Southwest Michigan. And so I think I have one set of cards left for this class. And so the first person that reaches out to me and says they're interested in it, I have a set of cards I could pop in the mail for you. Um, you'd have everything in terms of paper, embellishments, and the twine made into little bows already for you. So all you have to do is your stamping. So this class, um, hi Elizabeth from Texas. This class is geared towards beginners, but everybody is welcome. Uh, we try to keep this class simple for people who are just starting out uh, because they may not have stamp and cut and emboss machines or the die cutting and embossing machines. Hi, Karen Wettstein. And so for those people that are just beginning out, they need ideas to make cards that they can use paper, ink, um, adhesives, like the five essentials for stamping that are the necessities for stamping. Hi, Hilda now. Uh, and so we try to gear these cards that they're pretty, like they look spectacular, but there's very little prep work for them and little um, like die cutting, no die cutting, no embossing. Um, and so just because we say it's geared towards beginners doesn't mean that you can't watch it. Um, if you've been stamping for 30 years, you always will learn new things <laughs> if you're willing to listen and learn. <laughs> and I always try to throw in my tips and tricks as I'm teaching class. Hi, Tammy Steckling. And so um, the first time, hi, Cheryl Thomas. The first time I did this class was in July. Um, like the 24th or the 25th and hi Debbie Schultz. I really went in depth in like great depth <laughs> on all the requirements and basics uh, for beginning stampers and what I did last so August and now this is September my third class and so what I I didn't do it in August I didn't go over everything again and I didn't think I would do it again. I think what I will do is always refer people back to that video. I spent a good hour talking about anything and everything and I want to refer people back to that video to watch that. It doesn't make sense to reinvent every one of these classes with that same content when I've already done it. So what I do want to do is briefly go over <laughs> the five things that um, are required for stamping, like that you need, especially if you are beginning, just to help, you know, keep you in the loop of what's going on. Hi, Marsha. But for those that want to know more and are in interested in learning about like what is all involved with starting making cards and crafting. Hi, Donna. Uh, thank oh, Donna said she shared. Thank you for sharing, Donna. So um, refer back to that video. And that video was the Let's Just Stamp Blossoms in Bloom. Um, it featured Blossoms and Bloom stamp set. So if you're in my Cards by Christine business page and you take that little hourglass or the, you guys, ha, 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 hang on. <laughs> the magnifying glass. <laughs> if you take the magnifying search glass and type Blossoms in Bloom or Let's Just Stamp, it'll bring up suggestions. And it's a video from like July 24th or July 25th. Watch that video. I encourage you to. If you have a hard time finding the link for the video, I don't know if you guys know it, but absolutely. Hi, Arliss. Happy Sunday to you too. Every video that I make, I reference in my event calendar on the cardsbychrispy.com website. 
So if you go to my calendar of events, you guys can search all the way back, probably two years. And I've been doing it for probably since the beginning. Every event, I put the link for the YouTube video and the link for the Facebook replay so that if you are scrolling through my events calendar in the past and you see these beautiful cards and you're like, oh, I want to make them, you could watch that video and you can easily link back to the Facebook video or the YouTube video by finding that event. And so um, you, our list is ready for mystery night. Nice. So just want to teach you guys that there's ways to find things and um, watch past videos. Uh, and so if you go to my calendar of events, either in Facebook or in my cardsbycrispy.com website, you can find those video links very easily. So just a little heads up for anybody that doesn't know that. Sometimes you guys don't know what you don't know. And once you know, it's like, woo, <laughs> no holds barred, right? <laughs> Lots of stamping happens then. <laughs> so, so when it comes to paper crafting, you guys, you need five main things. And these are what I think you need. You know, people think, well, you need other things like embellishments and ribbon. No, you don't really need those accessories for stamping or paper crafting. But what you really need are stamps. And we're going to be using stamps today. We're going to be using the Love of Leaf stamps. We also need ink. And we've got six different colors that we're going to be using for this class today. Hi, Mary Ann. Hi, Jody. Hi, Kathy Larson. You also need paper. You can't make a card really without paper. I mean, you could probably use something similar, but you really need cardstock. Um, cutting tools because paper comes in large sizes so you need to be able to cut it down to size using a cutter like a guillotine or a, like a track blade um, scissors are cutting tools as well hi Ethel King and then you guys also need adhesives unless you make so many moons ago I can't remember somebody sent me a, a piece of loose leaf hi Bonnie somebody sent me a piece of loose leaf and on the it was folded in half so like an eight and a half by eleven piece of loose leaf Fold it in half, and on the front it was written, Times are hard, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. And then you open it up and said, Here's your card. <laughs> and they wrote it in a marker, and it was just, it was entertaining <laughs> to get a card. And it really was a card, even though it was a piece of loose leaf. But it just goes to show you, you don't necessarily need all these ga gadgets and gizmos to make a beautiful card <laughs> or to make a card. So, <laughs> hi, Leota. And so, you don't necessarily need adhesives. You don't necessarily need ink, but you guys, those are the five main, five main things if you wanna make a nice card for card making or greeting cards or paper crafting. Hi, Heather from Wisconsin. So again, stamps, and there's different types of stamps, paper, inks, cutting tools, and adhesives. And I just wanna refer you guys back to um, that video from July 24th or 25th that was the Let's Just Stamp featuring the Blossoms in Bloom. Another thing I always like, like in, a, in a nutshell, I like to tell you guys that, because sometimes I'm getting first time people watching me do this class, and I want to just tell you that there's different types of paper crafters, and I always like to throw this in here when I'm teaching a beginner class. Um, so there's anyone who stamps, creates memory books, or uses paper in any way at all to create gifts, art, home decor, and so on, is a paper crafter. And there's generally four aspects to being a paper crafter. And I think we can all relate to some of these. <laughs> so one is you buy and use paper, ink, stamps, and the works. Okay, that's great. Yeah, most of us do that. But some people also just collect paper, inks, stamps, and the works. So collectors. We don't call people hoarders. That's no, no, no. We're collectors. <laughs> we like things. We buy things and then we keep them. <laughs> we collect them. And then there are also an, an aspect of a paper crafter, someone that loves to organize, reorganize, or just look at your ink, paper, stamps, and the works, okay? So that's another aspect is I collect things, but I also love to touch it, feel it, smell it, and just have it around me. Okay, you guys, if you've been in the hive or if you've seen pictures, like I'm the, like the, the this to the nth degree. Um, and then there's another aspect is that you love to browse blogs, YouTube, Pinterest, and get inspiration on ideas and how you might use all your goodies, okay? So um, the other thing too is if you're just beginning to start out, I do have two pieces of advice for you. Um, that you're more likely to sit down um, and craft and create things if your stuff is set up and you're in a manner where you're ready to go. I can tell you, when before I became a demonstrator, you guys are giving the little crying things, I love it. So when I before I became a demonstrator, 
I was all of those four aspects, all of them. I never created as much as I have in, until I really started doing classes. And it forced me to use my stuff, which was awesome. Like, I, it was a good thing for me. Uh, <laughs> no, Sandy, tell your husband, collect. We don't like the word hoarder. <laughs> Hoarders are people who can't walk through their room because it's to the ceiling full of stuff. I think most of us don't have a room filled to the ceiling full of stuff. Okay, that's a hoarder. <laughs> okay, um, so it is the thought of the person that counts. When you send a card, don't make any difference how it looks. Exactly, Arliss, you got that right. And um, Hilda Nell, you feel bad when you run out of pretty paper. Well, you know what, Hilda Nell? Don't feel bad. You know that they make more pretty paper every day of the year and you can buy more pretty paper. So many times I am one of them. I have bought DSP because it's gorgeous and then I leave it in the plastic because I'll tell you, before I started becoming, you know, doing classes, I was a collector at heart. I have so much unopened packs of retired designer series paper because it was so pretty that I didn't want to cut it up. You can't feel bad. You just have to cut it up and buy more pretty paper. It may not be the same pretty paper, but it's still gonna be pretty paper. Hi, Deb Norman. Okay, you're also more likely to sit down and craft if your space is cleaned up. One of the things that stopped me from stamping and crafting so long ago <laughs> was that my space wasn't clean. And so you know what I would do? I'd have an hour to work on something and I would spend that hour cleaning and organizing my space and all of a sudden, darn it, that hour was gone and I did not make anything, nothing at all. And so if you can keep your space relatively cleaned up so that you can just always, come, like if you have a dedicated space, that's amazing. And I know not all of you guys have dedicated spaces, but if you have it easily accessible that you can pull your stuff out, make something and then put it away, like that's great. But if you have a dedicated space that you can leave your stuff out, that's awesome. And just don't feel like you have to clean up before you start crafting. Just start creating and crafting. That's my advice. <laughs> and Faye just said you can make beautiful DSP with your stamps. And that is perfect. Sometime I should have um, Kelly do a technique Thursday on creating DSP. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, I should do a tip Tuesday. But um, I'm going <laughs> to pawn that one off on Kelly and have her do a technique Thursday. And I should write that down. So, so that I don't forget to have Kelly do a technique Thursday on creating designer paper. So I've seen so many ideas out on Pinterest and Facebook where people have made their own designer paper by stamping different images um, in different colors and just, you know, stamping a whole eight and a half by 11 full and then cutting it down. So you can make your own too. So that's everything in a nutshell that I wanted to give you guys um, about with this beginner class. But again, it's not necessarily for beginners. We're going to make some pretty amazing and awesome cards here. And um, But refer back to that video if you want an in-depth explanation of everything. So um, before we get into class, I want to just give you guys a heads up of what's coming up and where we're at with stuff with classes. I had mentioned I have one set left of this class. So first person that says they want it, they'll get it. Hi, Deanna Estelle. Um, and then what's coming up, my mom is going to be working on these next week. So for the Harvest Meadow, I did some math last night. And I think I have about 10 sets of cards unaccounted for. And for the Blackberry Beauty, I think I'm like looking, I'm, you know, do you guys do that with your eyes when you think, or you're thinking of an answer, you like look up into the sky to see what the answer is. <laughs> so I was thinking for Blackberry Beauty, I, I looked last night and I think I have about 10 or 11 left. So somewhere around the same. So if you guys are interested in either of these classes, please re register soon to make sure that you get them versus me having to say no. <laughs> so um, I'm reading Marsha's comments. Stampin' Up! goes much faster than when we are able to use all the DSP before we can possibly finish with it. Yep, <laughs> before there's more coming. Oh, yes. In the celebration, you guys, I think they knocked it out of the ballpark by putting, they had three sets of designer paper, the dazzling paper, a few stamp sets, and some dies. They really gave us a collection of stuff. The only thing that they didn't put in there, I noticed, was ribbon. I love ribbon, too, you guys. If you don't notice, I put ribbon on absolutely every card. It's very rare that I miss putting ribbon on a card. So, hi, Becky. Hi, Sue Sorrell. Um, oh, Hilda Nell got the card. Ver perfect, you guys. Yep, happy mail's always going out. So, okay, let's flip down really quick so I can show you guys what. So, these are the three cards we're going to be making. And then for the Blackberry Beauty, you guys, this is the ink, paper, scissors. If you go to my calendar of events, this class is, Ju what, July? Nope, it's September 27th. 
You'll get everything in your kits to make these. All you really, really need are sentiments and some splashy backgrounds, potentially a leaf here if you want to put a leaf on here. Um, but otherwise, I use the Ephraim pack, Ephraim pack, <laughs> and that will be part of your goodie bag with the gold ribbon. And you guys, these Ephraim packs and the gold ribbon are on back order. You can't get them right now. So I, I have enough that I counted for 36 people for this class. So, all right. For um, the um, Harvest Meadow, I accounted for 60 people. You guys, I have 50 already accounted, and I think I have 10 left of this one. This one is a class you can get for free. The Ink, Paper, Scissors is a fee. Where this one, you can get for free with an order, a minimum purchase, or you can pay the fee. Um, your kits include all your die cut pieces and boss people pieces, um, the designer paper, the embellishments. All you need to do is provide stamps and ink and adhesive for this one. Hi, Penny Powell. So these two classes are the ones that are coming up next that we need to know soon. At the end of this class, if I don't forget, these are the next three cards for the um, uh, Let's Just Stamp class. And I don't want to show them to you because I want them to be a surprise for the end. But these are the three cards for the Let's Just Stamp next month. And then, you guys, don't forget, Monday is Mystery Night. So, 6 p.m. Central. Wait, that's tomorrow. Tomorrow is Mystery Night. <laughs> I don't know if I said Monday or tomorrow. But it's tomorrow night, 6 p.m. Central. And then, um, oh, Penny's in Florida. Yay. Okay, Penny. Oh, my God. I saw your Mario card in the Sunday shared. I didn't read your comment back to me yet. Um, I've, I, you guys, I did laundry today <laughs> and I cleaned up. <laughs> oh, Hilda Nell. Hilda Nell, um, we'll connect after, um, for the, um, Blackberry class. Um, let me just write that here. <laughs> Hang on. So I don't forget, but Penny, I want that card. I love Mario so much and I want to put it on display here in the hive. And then my brother, his birthday just passed in June, but I want to save it and give it to my brother for his birthday next June. We both are Mario fans and we both have the coin as our tone on our, for getting text messages. It's just funny. So yes, I, I got to connect with you because I will buy these cards from you. <laughs> I just want to know how much you want for them. <laughs> so, uh, yes, Becky, I think Deb Norman might've told me, Deb, I'm not sure if I, you posted this in the last, one of the last lives. I thought you, or maybe it was the turtle punch. Oh, I don't remember. But I think the harvest dies are coming back the end of this month, sometime next week, like the week of the 27th. So like within by the end of September, the harvest dies are supposed to be back in. And I think Deb put the turtle punch too is the day before the end of September. So, um, okay. And then you guys on Thursday night is the paper pumpkin live. And I did get one of my paper pumpkins. I'm still waiting for a couple more. So you guys should start to see them trickling into your mailboxes if you haven't gotten your paper pumpkins yet. Okay. So roll call, let's grab my sign up sheets here so we can see you guys, I even have a purple file folder. So, all right, see, I gotta show you the purple file folder. Okay. Oh, Penny will give them to me. Well, we we can barter then, Penny. I will gift you some cards in exchange. How does that sound? I make cards. I didn't know if you guys knew that, but I do make cards. <laughs> oh, I say that because every time Tyler wants, so my boyfriend's name is Tyler, if you guys don't know that. And whenever we need a card, like he's like, oh, I'd like to give a card to so-and-so. He says, well, we can ask Gina if she'll make us a card. Gina makes really nice cards. He's joking and teasing me. Or he'll be like, well, Diane makes really pretty cards. Um, we could call Diane and ask Diane if she'll she'll make a card for us. And I'm like, duh, Tyler. <laughs> I have a room full of cards. And he does it to joke with me. Hi, Chris Dudarenki. Hi, Char. Okay, so today is mystery card. Not mystery card. Let's just stamp. You guys, I'm excited <laughs> about Mario. Can you tell? <laughs> okay, so Deanna Stout. We have Faye Godby, Barb Barco, Sandy Wicklander, Marsha Kulibert, Lori Helgeson, Ellen Brover, Ann Bellinger, Cynthia Runtree, and then Karen Wettstein. Um, somebody else. Um, oh, you know what? Fel Feline May signed up. I don't have her name on here, but Feline signed up, and I just didn't write her name on here. So um, I have her card sitting over there. So I'm pretty sure Feline was my 11th one because I only have one left. That I do remember. So yay, a bunch of you guys are here. So that's awesome sauce. Are you guys ready to stamp? <laughs> Let's just stamp. <laughs> so 
Yep, Chris, watching for a little bit. I bet it feels really good to have a wedding behind you and you can have some room to breathe and maybe stamp a little and <laughs> make some cards. <laughs> so, okay, so let's flip our still skin down and let's look at what we're gonna be working on. So these are the three cards. I'll take them all out of the plastic so that you guys cannot have the glare from the plastic on the card. All right, so Diane and I made these and we really kept in mind that fall is upon us. And here in Wisconsin, we have the changing of the leaves. <laughs> other places have changing of other things, we have changing of the leaves. And so we get into these nice fallsy colors. And so we did one with Night of Navy with Cajun Craze. And lo and behold, that is actually pumpkin pie, not Cajun Craze. Cajun Craze ink was super duper dark. And then Mary Merlot mixed with some espresso and then Mossy Meadow mix with some Bumblebee. Now, the Designer Series paper, hi, Stacy Burns. Um, yes, it does, getting back into it again. Yes, good, Chris, happy to hear that. Um, on all of these, you guys, we pulled in the Genial Gems, which are part of uh, the hand-penned suite in the annual catalog. They're Pale Papaya and Soft Succulent Gems. Now, just so you guys know, if you got the kits for me, all of your gems, there's nine gems in one of the kits. And I can't remember which kit was kitted up last. Um, the week of September 20th, but you can't order them right now. Okay, Deb, thank you so much for that update. So the Turtle Punch and the Harvest Meadow Dyes are both turned off because they exceeded their back order limits. And so if you ordered them and have them on back order, they'll be shipping out later next week or this week. And then um, Marsha already made all of her cards, <laughs> so she's going to make more um, from class. Um, and then if you guys, that as soon as that they have the inventory updated, you'll be able to order them again, I'm guessing, by the end of September, early October. So going back to these gems, they're in one of your kits. I can't remember which one, just know there are nine of them. There's like four green and five papaya or vice versa. You either got five of one and four of the other just to mix and match them on your cards. Each of your little kits should have a little baby bozy here that we did with the linen thread. Um, and then this one's cool. So we did this one as a vertical, or it's like a vertical card, but what we did is we folded it over and created a pocket here so that you guys, let's see what I have here. Um, let's grab a card here. So this could be used to put like a gift card in there or a gift certificate or something. So we created a pocket with this Oh, Julie Bierschbach, you can take the last set. You bet. Let's put that on the post. So you guys, there's none left, okay? So Julie gets the last set. I did not see anybody else that commented. So it's all yours, Julie. Um, so this we did the same thing with this one. So this one goes like this, and we created a pocket for that one. Just to show you to, to um, add like just some coolness to a card. This one, we did a double mat on. So it almost looks like this opens up like that, like this strip, but it is glued flat. And then when you open it up like this, we did a double mat on here. So you bet, Julie. Okay, so let's start with which one? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, we designed, what did we, we made this one first. So let's start with this one. So the colors on this one, oh, it's the first one on my, my pile here. So if you guys got the kits for me, when you open up your parts here, you'll have this Mary Merlot base. It's your hot dog style, meaning it's long, where when you cut the base the other way, like this, we call that hamburger, okay? <laughs> Just some terminology. Um, it's 11 by five, four and a quarter. We have it scored here at five and a half, which is basically in half. You're gonna burnish the edge with your bone folder. So when you're gonna cut something like this, this is a half of a sheet of paper. The other half would, you know, so you get two bases out of one eight and a half by 11. Now, the difference here is that we did score this. Let's see where I scored it on here. I got my handy dandy little sheet here. We scored it at nine and three quarters. So when you're looking at this, it's scored at nine and three quarters. And then that folds in, not back. Now, another way you could do it if you wanted is you could definitely, if you like, if you don't want a pocket card, you guys could flip this back and just glue it flat. You could even just cut this off if you don't even want this flap. The thing is you're gonna want to see this paper here. And the other option, so you guys can rearrange your cards as, as much or as little as you want when you get kits for me. 
So if you don't like the concept of having that folded like that, you could do something like this and um, mat it this way, right? But you could also flip this back and have this like that and then make it so that it stays loose like this. Um, Connie, no, the directions aren't posted. I provide PDF tutorials to all the people that register and pay for classes. So they are a free gift to me for people who sign up for class. So um, I don't post them to the general public, but I do talk about measurements and sizes throughout my class here. Hi, Christine. Hi, Wendy. Okay, so what we did is we folded it in and we're gonna create this as a pocket card. So if you're looking to give somebody a little gift card for something that they did, like they cut grass, they picked up your mail for you for a week. Oh my gosh, I should send my neighbor a card. Oh, I should. Okay, <laughs> I just realized that I haven't given them any gifts lately. <laughs> my neighbor always picks my mail up. <laughs> no problem, Connie. So what we're gonna do here is take the tear and tape and we're gonna put a little bit. So tear and tape is a super permanent like type of adhesive. And what we're gonna do is put that really close to the edges here. And that is just going to pick that waxy paper off and then all you do is just close that. And that's what creates a pocket here. Now, sometimes people take circle punches and they punch out a circle so that you can easily grab. But since this is such a short fold over, whatever you put in here, somebody's gonna be able to easily grab it out, okay? So this is tear and tape, a type of double-sided tape adhesive uh, that can be also used as a single-sided tape. So I like to use up scratch paper. I accidentally printed a whole bunch of these incorrectly. <laughs> so I'm using that up. Okay, so your piece of designer paper here is actually, what is it, four by four. So that's a perfect size because you could get nine of these out of a 12 by 12. So that mat's gonna go right here. Our piece of designer paper here is one and a quarter by four. It's gonna get adhered over onto our white mat, which is a traditional mat of four by five and a quarter but I wait to do gluing. You guys don't get glue happy on me. I always like to stamp whatever needs to be stamped before I would adhere in case I mess up. Now, I can't mess up because I already have stuff printed on the back because I use scratch paper. But for you guys at home, let's get your stamping done before you um, go ahead and adhere. Oh, I'm very happy you like the cards, Connie. Then for these mats right here, Mary Merlot is four by two and three quarters. And then this white piece is three and three quarters by two and a half. Sometimes when I use my guillotine cutter, you guys, I get a little hair on the top that hangs off. If you ever get that from mine, just take your scissors and you can nip that little nub off of there. <laughs> so, hi, Doc. Oh, Doc Gartner, it's, let's just leave. Oh, I, Faze, we're talking to Doc. Got it. <laughs> All right, so let's do our stamping on here. So when you get stamps from Stampin' Up, they come in these cases that are like DVD cases. And... What I like to do is I reference in case there's any um, dies that go with them. I put the sticker or the from the catalog, I put the name on the inside cover so that I know I can easily find the dies if I'm looking for them because I keep all my stuff together alphabetical by order. Okay, so when you get these stamps, the other thing you'll need to have to go along with them are blocks. You could use these without blocks if you get creative, like inking up on your surface and then flipping paper upside down, but no, that's too hard. So you, you do wanna have blocks. I mean, people can figure out ways to do things all the time, but I like to use the block that is the right size for it. Oh, Debbie said that this is one of her favorite bundles. Yes, I love the leaves too. Hi, Kathy King and Judy Jones. Okay. So Mary Merlot is the ink that we're using here. And so what we're gonna do, the ink pads are all water-based except for one. Um, Stampin' Up! has a stays on pad that is a permanent ink. Otherwise, all the rest that they sell are water-based. Um, so Hilda Nell said her friend uses a block file for that. Yeah, I mean, you guys can, there's so many different ways to figure out how to use stamps. Um, I generally always try to use the block that matches to the size of the stamp. <laughs> so the pads here are foam pads, so you don't really need to squish very hard. And what I'm going to do is just kind of off kilter this and stamp my leaf right onto my piece of basic white. And I like to let the ink marinate into the paper. I'm going to just check what I have on the inside. I have one of those little leaves, this little guy right here. So we're going to get him prepped while I let that sit for a second. So we call it marinating, you guys. <laughs> we're letting the ink 
marinade onto the paper and it just makes for a really crisp, clean image. Okay, so then on the inside, so we're gonna leave that here. As long as we have this ink open, we're gonna go ahead and get the leaves stamped. So the reason the leaves are stamped on the left-hand side is because we have the designer paper over here. And you can see there's two tone, there's dark and light. What that is from is stamping your ink at first strength and second strength, meaning stamping once is first strength and stamping second is second strength. Or people refer to them as generations as well. So first generation, second generation, but I like to use strength because the ink is stronger here and lighter there. Okay, so that's our inside. And so that's it for the Mary Merlot. And then I pulled in, for, well, I should say we pulled in espresso and the espresso is the thank you. Oh, I got some little thing that was in the ink pad. <laughs> At least it wasn't ink. Okay, so what we also have to grab here is thank you. I use a lot of thank you cards and a lot of birthday cards. And so we're gonna use that little thank you, but we're done with this stamp right here. The other thing I also like to do is stamp off before I go to my chamois, which is just a, like a rubbery, foamy, chamois thing. It's a chamois, you guys, like for cleaning your car. That's what I use for cleaning stamps. And let's clean that off. We'll set that in case we need it. I can't remember if we use it again. <clears throat> but thank you is gonna be off here on the side. Now, if you need a birthday card, these would be great birthday cards. These could be great, great get well cards. <clears throat> if you wanna practice, make sure you practice on a piece of scratch paper before you actually go to stamps, just so you know how it's gonna look. And we're gonna put the thank you right there. <clears throat> you guys, I got the little froggy going. <laughs> Kermit's with me today. <clears throat> okay, so let's, that's it for stamping on this one, you guys. We kept it, it's kind of super simple. When you can add designer series paper to a card, it just helps, like just throw it, like what, knock it out of the ballpark is what I wanna say. Okay, so well, let's put that there, this there, and this out of the way. So now that we have our stamping done, let's go ahead and assemble. So there's different types of adhesives. We talked about the tear and tape. <clears throat> there's also something called stamp and seal, which is a tape runner. Uh, if you use that, what you do is you just, I don't use it often. <laughs> you run it and you can kind of maybe see, there it is. I try, if I use this, I always try to keep it as flush to the surface as possible. If you have a tilt to your wrist at all, it will not all come off <laughs> and you end up with some of the adhesive rolling in with it and then it gets gummy on you. The thing with the, the, tear, um, the tape runner is you have to be very good. Hi, Charlene. Hi, Mary Jo. You have to be very good about adhering this. If you put this on crooked and you try to move it, you're going to rip your paper. So what I generally try to do is I line up the t side and the top and then I kind of wiggle it around, I see the right side here. And if you get these two lines and that one kind of straight, you should get your last one straight. <laughs> now, if you don't get this right and you try to peel this up, it's, um, it's depending on your tape runner. Um, hi, Linda, depending on your tape runner, you might rip it. I have a hard time with that. I actually prefer uh, an adhesive called liquid glue. It's a craft glue. Uh, don't confuse it with the white Tombow glue. That is a water-based, it will warp your cards. This green, I call it the green glue. It's not green, just the caps are green, but it's a craft glue. So it doesn't um, leave um, the paper warping and you've got wiggle room. So like, let's say you put that down and you don't like it. Oh my gosh, as long as you're quick about it, you could pull it right back up and then wiggle it right to where you want it. And you can still shimmy it around until you get it where you want it. Okay, so we've got that and that. Now let's do our inside here. So I'm gonna flip the designer paper over and put a little glue. So some people tell me they have a really hard time using liquid glue. They get it all over their fingers and they end up with glue fingers. And I can see how that can happen if you're not um, responsible. I should say we're small, careful. Careful is the word, careful is the word. Because if you put on thick and it oozes out, it's gonna come out your sides. Um, the, the trick is less is best with this. So if your little DSP is hanging over the edge like mine is, you can just take your scissors and trim that. 
I always cut my DSPs slightly longer than what I need them instead of slightly shorter <laughs> because if they were slightly shorter, you'd see the white line up there. <laughs> so, um, so a little bit of liquid glue. So this is the good amount of liquid glue on the back of a card. You see how thin that is? You don't need more than that. Um, this craft glue will, it will stand the test of time. I get swap cards from people uh, and they sit up on my boards and they are here for like a year sometimes, but like, cause the catalog lost last year at the end, I can tell who uses non stampin up tape runner <laughs> because those card like mats will pull right off. When you use liquid glue, they, this is not coming apart. <laughs> okay. So then we also have these dimensionals. It's another type of adhesive. I like to add depth to my card. And so what I'm going to do is pop up this thank you. So how I'm going to do that, you don't want to put any sort of adhesive right here because that will make it a trick card and the person getting it won't open. So what do you do? So I flip this over and I put adhesive on that right margin close to the edge. Oh, I did that backwards. Hang on. <laughs> Sorry. Let's rewind. It goes here close to the edge. Okay. This is my trick. So that's going to go. So I know that I don't go over. And then on the left side is where I put it on this one. Now, what about the middle? Nobody likes the saggy middle. <laughs> so I like to put a few more dimensionals right in the middle like that. So when you have this on here, you're gonna have a row of dimensionals, dimensionals, and that's very supportive here. All right, <laughs> have fun at the birthday party, Penny. Okay, so then you pick off the backs of your dimensionals. Yes, I can do that in one false swoop. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then what you do is you just line this up. I'm trying to center it top to bottom, left to right, like that. And now because I did my dimensionals like that, I don't have any risk of them going over. I've got that done and now it's bow time. So this is a gadget called a bow maker, you guys. I have them for sale. Um, I have a, a friend's husband makes them and this is a smaller version. I have ones now are a little bit bigger and they have a little bit coating on them. So if anybody's ever looking for bow makers, I have them here. And so I have these two nails and what I do is I take the end of the linen thread, I wrap it around twice. Hi, Stacy Warner. And then we're gonna make ourselves a little bow with a bow maker. You guys, I did a tip Tuesday on this about a year ago now. Wait, when was it? Nope, it was January. It's gonna, it feels like forever ago. It was January, I did a tip Tuesday. So by doing my bow maker and keeping my end of my ribbon attached, all I did was waste, you can't even see it. That's the only amount that I actually am gonna throw away from my making my bow here. So you're, you can be very conservative with the ribbon. And what color is the piece on the right side? Um, are you talking, Marianne, are you talking about this? Just confirm if that's what you mean. If this is what you mean, it's designer series paper from the beauty of the earth in the annual catalog. All the designer paper for all these cards is the beauty of the earth. So one more adhesive that I like to use is something called mini glue dots. Oh, can you see it? Let's see. I don't know if you guys can see it. They're mini glue dots and you can roll them up. <laughs> They're also called snot dots. Um, they look like little boogers, clear boogers, so healthy boogers. And what you do is you put that down and then you can put your bow right into it. Whenever it comes to attaching ribbon, like bows to the outside of cards, the mini glue dots are the perfect type of adhesive for that. And I have my tails nice and down. And then lastly, we always like to bling up stuff. Um, one way is a Stella pen. You have to be very careful with the Stella pen. On a card like this, what would happen if you do it? It will wash your leaves all together. So one way you could add Stella to this card, whoa, she's a juicy one. You could just go around the edge of the Mary Merlot here and just sparkle it. So a Stella pen is a glitter pen. It just adds a little bit of sparkle, controlled sparkle <laughs> to your card. None of that will flake off. It's very hard to see in the video, but in person, you'll be able to see, you'd see all the sparkle. That's a Wink Estello pen that we sell. And so then the gems. A tool that is really great for a beginner stamper, Diane Bogenhagen, 
swears by the tool. She is one that got it right away. I see her use it all the time in class. This putty end is perfect for picking up things. She loves the pokey end tool. There's a spatula end to it. Uh, there's also a stylus that's part of this. But what it's great for is you can pick up your gems so that you're not having, if you don't have nails, sometimes it's really hard. So we're gonna do one there. Um, so I have nails, so I'll generally try to pick up, but you guys, it's so easy. It picks up, I don't know if you can see, it picks it up with the putty end, and then you pick it up, <clears throat> and then you can just put that right here. So the take your pick tool is a really good all-in-one tool for your toolbox, okay? And that's it, a one beautiful card Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. <laughs> so, Mary Merlot mixed with some Beauty of the Earth paper, Jenny L. Gems, linen thread, um, inks are Mary Merlot, and espresso. Very, very cool card. You guys, so Marsha <laughs> made all of these cards. I think she sat down and she made them super quick. And she's making more of them. <laughs> so I'm so excited that you guys can get some samples or some cards for me and just you and when you take the class with me you get the measurements so you can look them up you don't have to get your ruler out and try to measure yourself and so um it's easy like and just think you didn't have to do any die cutting if you guys do swap cards if you're in any swap groups like the good layout for a swap card okay so there we go one done two to go janice says they're beautiful yay so does janet okay so one done Let's do, what do we want to do next? We'll do this one, which is the brother. So these are brother and sister. So this is the sister, and now we've got the brother. <laughs> That's why I'm going with it, because it's got that same flap here on the inside. Okay, so what do we have here? This card, in your kits for me, you're going to have, it's the hamburger style. It's eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter, which is the halfway point for a card. So take that, you can fold it. Burnish it. Now, this one, let's grab my piece of paper here. This one is scored at four and a quarter and seven and a half. So when you have this open, you got four and a quarter, seven and a half. You could do the same thing. You could bend it back or you could bend it in. If you don't like that concept, you guys at home could just cut it off. But you want to see this Cajun craze coming through here. So I'm going to fold it in just like my sample has here. Burnish the edge. Same concept as the last one. We're going to take our tear and tape. You guys just need a little bit of tear and tape here. A little bit of tear and tape. Yes. So fall is going on now for September, October, and into November. You guys could use these fall cards. And it's just, if you, have, if you don't have the Love of Leaves set, but you have other fall like leaf sets, they're so good. The Beauty of the Earth paper is awesome. Okay. So take that. Peel that off, and now all you do is you fold that, and now you have your pocket, okay, to put something in there, a little love note if you want. Okay, so our Cajun craze is the traditional four by five and a quarter mat. Now that's what's gonna go on the inside here. Now, the two pieces of white that are the same size. So, let's see here. Okay, these two, there's a white and a navy. Um, they are a three and seven eighths by two and five eighths. The white one goes here, and then the navy one will go here. And then you have a small one for on the outside that is three and five eighths by two and three eighths. And that is what mats onto this one, right? Like that. You guys also have some strips in your kits. There's a Cajun craze half inch by something and then a white that's a half inch by something. I left them a little bit long depending on how long and skinny your sentiment is and you can maneuver this how you like to. The designer paper is three by, um, where is it on here? Oh, I'll get that way on the side here. Three by five and a quarter and that also is the beauty of the earth and that will get put right on there. Okay, so first things first. Let's get our stamping underway so what do we have on the inside we have that little dude okay so hope changes everything is what we did for this one and then we have this big leaf here so i think we'll save this one for the next card put it over there we'll swap out this so when you guys get started you can make a small investment in getting some different size blocks these three these three sizes are like the most common. It's called a D block 
a C block and a B block. Those are what I use the most. Um, and all you really need to get started is one. But as you find yourself starting to stamp more and more and more, it's nice to have a couple of the same size because then you're not having to always switch out your blocks, okay? So those are what we need, and then hope changes everything. So that's what we need there. And so here it's perfect example where I can put, the other thing, putting the, the stamp on your block, if you put it flat on the surface, it should automatically and it could like take the shape of the stamp. So I'm gonna put it on the block like this, where if you try to put it on here yourself, you might end up with it crooked. So it's always good to set the stamps down and then put them on. Oh, Marcia said that she also did the embossing dies. Cool, very cool. So this is a perfect example where it's great to have two D blocks and because you have two stamps that you're gonna be stamping with at the same time. So we need our navy. So the colors we I have here are Knight of Navy. And we actually, we tried Cajun Craze and it was super, super dark. Our leaf looked dead as a doornail. So we went with the pumpkin. <laughs> so you guys at home, choose whatever color you like. Flip it over if you're not happy with it. So we're going to grab the piercing mat. So a piercing mat is $5. You can get them through Stampin' Up. Mouse pads work as well, pads of paper work as well, but ultimately with photopolymer stamps, there isn't foam matting underneath them. So you need to get a little cushion for underneath them and that helps to get a nice, good, clear image. So I noticed that my stem here was kind of off kilter. So we're gonna ink that up again. We're gonna put the leaf right here and give that a second to marinate and then grab your little strip here. And that's gonna be in the navy ink, Knight of Navy. And then that can stamp. So you guys have a half inch by something. If you, what you're gonna do is just cut it to the size that you need it. So I'm gonna stamp this closer to the one edge and then I only have to trim the one side. Hi, Joanna. Okay, give that a second. This should be done. And then we just have a little leaf on the inside. The little leaf on the inside, so it's at second strength. It's, so you can see it's super light. So hope it changes everything. And then it has here, I thought of you today. Um, your friendship is something I know I can count on. That could go with the thank you. Oh, hope changes everything. I'm trying to think if I should put in here. So I didn't put a sentiment on here. I was just going to write and I just, dec I like to decorate the insides with something. So hope changes everything. I wondered about putting, I thought of you today, <laughs> but like, I think I'm gonna leave it blank on the inside and then I can always stamp a different sentiment later on. So you guys at home, stamp whatever you like. But what happens here is to get that leaf as light as it is, we talked about this just a bit ago, you're gonna stamp off and then you're gonna go on here. So just so you guys, it's so cool. Let's just do it. Somebody's going to get this anyway, so we're gonna do it. We're gonna put in here the I thought of you today. That is right here. I wanna show you guys how it looks. So here's a perfect example. I have a block that's not used and I'm gonna stamp with the navy ink right over the top of that. So you can see that image right through it. So it just adds a little bit of extraness. <laughs> yeah, extraness, exactly. Okay, so stamp these guys off. So we have them ready for cleaning. And I think that's it for stamping. Okay, let these get out of the way. And now we can, I think I said that wrong. We can get ready for Eddie's ad assembling. <laughs> Okay, so for this guy, with you guys, with your white strips, this was just a scrap from a piece of paper that I gave you guys. So all you have to do is when you figure out where, you're, once you stamped it, and trim it. When you figure out that, what I did, you guys have options. You can leave the Cajun craze on both sides. You could have it just on the bottom. You could put it just on the top. You could do the bottom and the side, the bottom and the sides, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hold it like this, so I know how long I need to cut it, 
And so I'm gonna leave it white on the top and then the Cajun craze on the bottom and the sides. So you guys will just trim off your scraps there and you can do what you want with them. So this is ready to go. We can get glue happy. Okay, so we're gonna do this and we're going to do this one. So when it comes to adhering things, if you've watched me a time or two, you, you can tell I like to, as long as I opened up the glue, I like to do as much as I can without causing too much pain for myself. So there, I glued two things at the same time. And with this paper, there's no up or down that I am aware of. That's like a circly pattern. So that's just gonna go right on here. And then this one should fit on here good. I stamped them right. <laughs> if you guys um, reverse them and stamp the white the wrong, like backwards, just flip them over and re-stamp them, okay? And then the same concept with the dimensionals here. I want to put my dimensionals along the left side again here. And then on here, I'm going to put them along the right side on the card edge here. Look at that one more. And then do I have saggy middle? Yes, I think I will have a saggy middle. So I want to use up the line along the edge here. Perfectly good dimensional. We're going to put that right through the middle. So now we won't have saggy middle. Okay, pick all those off. Hi, Patricia Settle. So that's ready to go. But let's get this guy glued in too. And then we'll put that on. I like to have things kind of set so I know where to put them. A little bit of glue there. Let's just get this in here. I should have done this before I put dimensionals, but now that that's there, now I can have a good eyeballing of how this is gonna go. Something like that. And then this piece is going to go something like this. I'm just gonna make sure if I center it, it should be perfect that you don't see it. So let's put a little adhesive on the back of this one. It's pretty much centered left to right, top to bottom, something like that. And we can test it. Perfect, doesn't go over the edge. Now. For this, <laughs> Debbie said she, don't be jealous. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys a trick. The next card I do, I'm gonna show you how to do it with the, pick your, the take your pick tool, okay? Diane's got it down to a science. She doesn't pick them off with her nails and I will show you how fast you can do it with the pick your tool. Oh, Karen, thanks so much. Okay, let's flip this this way. This is gonna go on here. So I've got a little wiggle room, so I can slide this till I get it where I want it. And then this is actually flat on here. It's not popped up. So this is gonna go right here. And I don't wanna risk getting glue all the way to the edges it's on here. So I'm gonna kinda eyeball where it's gonna go. And I think I'm just gonna put a little line right there. And then I didn't risk putting glue so that it hangs over the edge. It's gonna go right about here. <laughs> Debbie, you can't do it with the tool either. Well, let me show you how I do it. Like, I think maybe if I show you, you can see it and maybe there is hope. <laughs> okay, this is the linen thread. So we're gonna make another widow baby bow. Hi, Kathy back. All right, make this little bow, you guys. I do not make any bows because I have this handy little gadget called the bow maker. Again, only lost one little piece there. Gonna put the bow on with our glue dots. So grab those back. It's gonna go right here at the base of the leaf. And I might trim my tails just a hair shorter so that they're not going into my wording. And last, but certainly not least, we have our genial gems. And on this one, it looks like I used three of the papaya, or I should say Diane and I used three of the papaya. Oh, Kathy needs the bow maker gadget. Kathy, please send me an email. I'd love to help you get a bow maker gadget. 
Chris M. Bertram at msn.com or text me. I will help you get a bow maker. They're um, $7 for the, the new version that I have, and then shipping is usually about $4. So four or five, depending on where in the United States it's going. So send me a message so I can help you get a bow maker. Here you go, guys. Here it is. We've got another one done. So Deb said pretty fall cards. They are. We had so much fun making these. The Blackberry, or the Blackberry, the Beauty of the Earth was the paper that made these cards so fun to make. Okay, so there we go, you guys. We have two done. So let's put this back in here. I always keep a set of my cards so I can always refer back to it. And then I've always got the measurements. So, okay, so that was, so we got those two done. These are what we've done so far. We have one more to do. The last one that we're gonna do is my Packer card. <laughs> I call it the Packer card because you guys, it's green and gold. <laughs> I'm from Wisconsin. So we have the Packers that we root for. <laughs> so, uh, and then this one, so it's Bumblebee mixed with Mossy Meadow. And that's what we're gonna work on next. So we're, let's clean stamps, you guys. Let's see here. Let's get these out of the way so we can work on the next one. Oh, Deb loves her bow maker. Yes, they make, help make beautiful bows every time. And if you watch, I have a video on it. So you could always refer back to my Tip Tuesday bow maker edition. Okay, so let's get these put away. This one uses hello, so we'll get that swapped out. Hello, hello, you called. <laughs> Adele is, sings that song. <laughs> Okay, and this one we're gonna do this sentiment. Your friendship is something I know I, I know I can count on. So we've got that on the inside. So let's flip this out here. Hi Mo, how's it going, girl? Oh my gosh. So Debbie said I was watching something on YouTube regarding the missing 22-year-old man had the name of Chris Bertram. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Definitely, I'm I'm a girl, and I'm not missing. You guys, you guys find me all the time. <laughs> okay, this, and then what do we have on the inside? Oh, we have that one. Okay, so we need this one back on here. And so these are what we need. So our stamps are prepped and ready to go. Set them off to the side. We'll get our little gems out of the way. Okay, last kit, you guys, what you have in here is Karen loves the Packer card. Yes, you're originally from Wisconsin and you're in Montana. <laughs> Still a Packer fan, I love it. Okay, so this kit is consisting of a ha hamburger style. So eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Just remember you guys, this is a horizontal card. So when we're stamping, we have to keep that in mind. Sometimes I trick people and they stamp their inside wrong because they forget which like layout we're working on. So this one's a horizontal, so grab the bone folder. Now, what you have here are two green mossy meadow mats that are the same size, four by five and a quarter. And then you have two whites that are the same size, three and 13 sixteenths by five and one sixteenth. One is for your outside, like that and one is gonna be for your inside. We did them like that just to add a little bit of extra color on the inside and to make it so it's not so confusing with the coloring. The designer paper here is two and a half by five and a quarter. You have a strip of a bumblebee, which is a half inch by five and a quarter. And then your mossy meadow here is three by three. And then the two and three quarter by two and three quarter for the white. So that's what we have for pages or pieces in your kits. So let's stamp first. So we get that done. Let's do the leaf, that's easy. So we'll get our leaf on, <laughs> let's get our leaf on. Okay, so grab your mat and it's gonna be this guy in Bumblebee. So ink it up really good. Oh, it's a juicy pad. Can you guys see the bubbles? I don't know if you can see. The bubbles, there's bubbles, so many bubbles. <laughs> Tiny bubbles. Okay, let's see what happens. My ink pads down in the hive here are super juicy, brand new pads. So this is gonna make it look super dark. I can tell it already. You can see the difference between this and this, just through this. 
So let's just see what happens here. <laughs> it's really juicy. It's dark. It's like a nice golden leaf. Okay, it's going to work. It'll Because if now if I would flip this over and do second strength, it would not be so good. So we're going to leave it with that. Just know that everybody's ink pads, you guys, just, I don't even know if this ink pad has been used. Look at that. It's so full of ink. Okay, there are tips on how to like remove excess ink or like if your pads are too inky, but I'm going to leave it. So the inside here has that leaf. That is definitely at second strength. So let's take this one for our inside and we're going to do that. And because it's, we're going to put words over the top of it. Here it is. We're going to stamp off on a piece of scrap paper. And then we're going to go right over to here and put it right in the middle. Hi, Joanne Kitts. Long time no talk. <laughs> okay, so we've got that. So that's it for the bumblebee, the attack of the bumblebee. And then mossy meadow for our sentiments. Now, you guys, look at this. We did the same thing here. We put the sentiment right in the middle. It fits so perfectly, actually. So make sure you got your words the right way. And that's going to fit right over the top of the leaf. Isn't that cool? Don't be afraid to create background underneath your words. So we're going to stamp off there. Now, the hello is what's left. Hello, you called. So this piece over here is for the hello. You don't want to have to guess like, oh, should I stamp it here or here? Like, where should I stamp it? Don't guess. This is how I do it. Grab the piece of designer paper, line it up on the bottom, and then line up this where it's going to kind of go. Okay. Hi, Jane. All right. So something like that is how you're going to like set it up. Now you can see the area that you need to stamp the hello. Remember, there's a piece of yellow right there. This little strip of yellow gets put right there. So you're kind of strategizing where the hello goes. Now go stamp your hello and be confident in your stamping. That's where it needs to go, <laughs> okay? That's, I would kind of prep it like that. Now I've got it where I think it needs to go. That's it for our inky dinky doos. And we can start assembling. So what first? Well, easy peasy. Let's do, we know that this white needs to go onto this green. And we know that this white and this white need to go onto their corresponding mats. So let's get their glue ready on those. So that one, that one, and that one. So this goes over here. And that will be for our outside. This one is our mat here for the outside. And then this one, our mat for the inside. Okay. So let's go ahead. We could adhere this one to the inside already. Like that. So Lori moved from Milwaukee to Minnesota. You do like the Packers. That's good. So I'll be honest with you guys. I'm not a football person either. Like, I don't have time to watch sports. <laughs> I'm, too, I'm making cards and having classes, and I don't have time to watch any kind of sports for, for the most part. <laughs> so, all right, you guys, there's two different ways that we can do this. Okay, this is going to get glued on to here, ultimately. This gets put on here as well, but we have to sneak this yellow piece in. So how are we going to do this? You have two options. You could either put adhesive. Hi, Feline. You could put adhesive here and then attach the strip, which might be the easiest thing to do. And to use liquid glue is going to be super hard because it's a thin piece. So what I might recommend, thanks for sharing, Feline, is... Instead of using liquid glue, I would just put a few pieces of, because you don't want to risk oozing the glue everywhere. What I would do is probably to make it the easiest, 
would be put a few pieces of tape back here and then oh pick tool so if you use want to use the if you don't have nails you can take this pick tool and it pull you would just kind of wedge underneath the waxy paper and it, it starts to pull it up and then once it pulls up you can grab it okay so what happens now is you can line this up again you don't have a lot of wiggle room we're not using liquid glue but I'm gonna start on that end I'm gonna try to line that up and now it's on there okay it's good nice and sealed good so this gets glued onto here and the reason I didn't glue this first onto here, because what happens if it hangs over a hair? So like when you glue this down now onto that mat, I made a figure eight for you guys in the infinity and beyond. Okay. I line up the corner here to there. Now, if you, if I, when I created your kits, have this DSP longer. Now you can take this, flip it over, use this as a guide and trim it. That was just a imitation. <laughs> I actually cut mine, my sample pretty good. So, but then once you have that nice and flush on this side, then you can flip that over and now glue it. Oh, look at that. The yellow is actually hanging over. Do you see that? Wait, let's see here. Can you see that there's a little bit of yellow there hanging out? Perfect, see? Now I can take that and nip that off of there. So now it's not gonna be hanging over. That's why I didn't glue that mat down right away. So now that everything's flush, do you see how little glue I use? That's hardly it. I mean, <laughs> it's hardly it. That's it. <laughs> okay. And because this is gonna go on here, just a little bit of dimensionals, Look at this, you guys. I'm going to use up more of this stuff right here. Look at this. This corner is going to be perfect for right here. And this one's going to go right here. And then I've got one more corner. It'll be an opposite corner, but we're going to go like that. <laughs> okay. One more. Use those ends up, you guys. Don't throw. I'm going to save that. I'm going to use that for the next card that I have for you guys, <laughs> probably. Get out of there. Okay. Oh, picky tool. Oh, you guys. Okay. So here, I want to show you this. So let's say that this is your dimensional right there. You can take your pick tool, pick it up with the pick tool, put it on with the pick tool, and then you take and pick it off with the pick tool. So you could use the pick tool for everything. So you take that, you saw, I, I pierced it, pulls it up. So by taking this, you poke at it, and I kind of went away with it. <laughs> and that's it. So another easy way to take and get that waxy paper off. I almost forgot to show you that, Debbie. I was so ingrained in <laughs> just using my nails. <laughs> okay. But pick tool is perfect for taking that waxy paper off, okay? This guy goes on here, something like so. So if you don't like the way you put it, you can at this point, you can still pick it up. Once you have this down exactly where you want it, then squish it good. All right. All right, Lori, we'll see you later. And we got some gems that we can put on here now. You guys should have some left. I, I noticed one fell off of this card, so I'll add one back over here too, right there. And then we'll put a pinky, a greeny. We'll do another greeny. Okay, so we got some gems going on. That goes here. That's done. And we have one more bow to make. You guys, I forgot to tell you that we we um, we filled up another celebration board. Hi, Susan Reed. So we're going to do a drawing when we're done here. Uh, we're going to do a drawing for the celebration board number five. And then we're going to start board number six. We have how many days left of celebration? We have, today is the 19th. We have 10 solid days of celebration left. 
It's very possible that we get a whole other board filled up yet. It's possible. Okay. Uh, you won't show your, sh uh, you, oh, you won't. I don't show that. Um, Amy, I talk through everything with my, I spend about an hour writing every PDF tutorial and I provide them to my students who take classes with me as part of their registration. And I spend that time to the people who um, take my classes and I don't actually take extra time. I do about 10, I don't know, about eight classes a month. <laughs> so I take my time and I, um, I talk through the measurements as much as I can for those people who are watching, but I don't put them on like a separate post or put them in the video. I am on to the next thing. So I try to give as much guidance during my videos that I can to people who didn't register for classes, um, but you are definitely welcome to take notes like Lori said she was going to do. That's definitely what, so she said she was going to go back and watch it and write down measurements, but yeah. I think that's it for this one. So Arliss is ready for making some more cards. Awesome. All right, here you go. My Packer Backer card, guys. Got her done. Okay, so there you go. We got all three cards made in a really good time, you guys. <laughs> so let me just show you. We'll recap them all here real quick. Hi, Mary Beth. All right. So do you guys have a favorite? The other thing, too, we did Stella on this card. I don't know if we can pull out the Stella. Oh, you guys, look at it. That's the Stella right there along the edge. It's shimmery and subtle. Cindy says, all three lovely cards. I just, I loved when we made these cards together that we focused on trying to do three different color palettes. Um, you're very welcome, Debbie. All three different color palettes, all very fallsy cards. <laughs> so beautiful autumn cards. Um, we had 12 people that signed up for this class um, online today. And I think we have four in person on Tuesday. If anybody's local that wants to do this class in person with Diane, you're welcome to sign up yet. She still has some space available. Chris loves all of them. Woohoo! Amy says, very pretty. Um, Cindy says, hope changes everything. Jody likes the Packer card. Awesome, awesome. You guys, I think I would actually pick this one to be my favorite if I had to pick one. Just one. Yes, Feline, your kits will be bailed out this week. <laughs> so I think I like this Mary Merlot. Just so pretty. Okay, so you guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Just a reminder, too, for anybody who is a newbie stamper, if you're looking for more ideas and learning more, don't forget to go back and watch the Blossoms in Bloom video that I did in July uh, that I, I took the first hour. So we kept this class down to an hour and 12 minutes, but that class was two and a half hours, and the first hour of it was teaching about beginning stamping. So Karen likes the Merlot one too. Awesome. You guys, I'm cleaning my stamps <laughs> so that they're done. <laughs> you know, it's like, get it done while we're all together so that I don't have to do it after. So do you guys see right back there? That is the celebration board number five, all full. I'm pretty sure I filled it up today. Barb sent in an order for me and that I got in. And I think Marlene sent me an order overnight too or yesterday during the day. It looks like they're all full, you guys. So that means we're going to do a drawing um, and see who the lucky winner is. So for every $50 in orders you place with me, um, so if you place like a $60 order, that counts as a $50 order. If you place like a $130 order, that's $250. I don't bank the totals, so it's per order. So with every $50 in orders, then you get your name on the board. And once I get the board full, I do a drawing, and the drawing is for a $25 gift certificate with me. So Barb Barca won the last board. She shopped the next day and used that gift certificate. It was awesome. Um, uh, Naomi won it once, and who am I thinking? Um, Barb Collins won, and she cashed in already. Everybody's cashed in so far, so that's awesome. Um, Oh, Sandy, you're very welcome. So stay tuned. The next class is tomorrow night with Mystery Night. So you guys are going to be in the hot seat making your cards, and I get to tell you what to do. <laughs> so, okay. So we're going to do a drawing. I have 25 little slips of paper in my baggie, and I'll flip the camera down in a second. And we're going to do a drum roll, and we're going to see who the lucky winner is of a $25 gift certificate. So most likely there'll be one more board, so there'll be one more winner. And regardless, if the board doesn't get full, 
even if it's half full or three quarters, I do the drawing anyways. So that's how we do the last one. If there were three names, I'd still do the drawing too. So, okay, are you guys ready? I'm gonna get that garbage thrown out. Drum roll. Okay, winner, winner, chicken dinners. <laughs> well, one chicken dinner today gets to be one. Okay, it's gonna be this one right here. Number 19, <laughs> 19, <laughs> let's look here. Marlene, oh my gosh, Marlene Bar Barons. She's from Fond du Lac. She put in her order yesterday. So she got one of the last, the last two numbers on this board this time were number 19 and number 20. So you guys, it just goes to show you any number has the possibility of winning. <laughs> so, all right. So Marlene, I will be reaching out to you. So what happens on the next order that Marlene places with me, she'll get a $25 gift certificate. So $25 off her order total. So you guys, I have a new host code right here. How it works is, this is the current one. Um, as I close workshops, I create new host codes. You can always find the most current host code on my website, cardsbychrisb.com. Go to events or about me or any of the links and on the right hand side, or if it's a phone, it's underneath it. Um, there's a picture of me wearing a mauvish, this color shirt actually, and underneath it, it always has the current host code. So you don't even have to reach out to me to ask what the current host code is. All you have to do is go to that website, copy it and paste it and use that host code. When you use the host code, as long as your order amount is the minimum amount for a class, so it's either 35 or 40, but now you want 50 because you get a free celebration item and you get your name on the board, you can pick a free class with me, a class that is a potentially free with order class. So like ink, paper, scissors is never one of those because it's a product-based class, but my monthly class, my bundle classes, this um, let's just stamp class, um, there's, there's a lot of them that, and you can always pick out a class from the current month or next month. So right now I'm taking um, orders with host codes for free classes for the month of September and October. It's always the current month and the future month. So, all right, so what does that mean? Um, that means if you guys are ready to sign up for next month, you can. I have here the let's, this is not even published yet. I don't think it is. I'll have to check with Kelly if we have a cover photo. But here are the cards for the Let's Just Stamp for next month. They are featuring the Harvest Meadow uh, stamps here. Uh, Harvest Meadow stamps. Oh, it's actually right here. I have them right here. So this is the Nature's Harvest stamp set. And what we pulled in are all the paper and the ribbon and the brushed metallic dots. So we pulled in all the elements from the suite except for the embossing folder and the dies. And you guys will need to have a couple markers on hand to color in your, your flowers here. But this is Let's Just Stamp featuring Nature's Harvest for next month. Um, I don't remember the dates on it, you guys, off the top of my head. But you can always go to my calendar of events at cardsbycrispy.com and you can find that. And register. So I hope you like them. Diane and I had fun making them. So <laughs> all right, you guys. So what's next for me? <laughs> Do you know what's happening this afternoon? I have a team swap party. I had about seven Be Happy Stampers sign up for the team swap party. And I think six people are coming. I think Diane's the only one that can't make it. And we're going to have my mom made jambalaya and everybody's bringing a dish to pass. And we're going to talk about the swaps that we made and and share some good food with each other and, and have a team swap party. So there's nobody that participated from remote locations. So it's all in person for this event. But um, anybody in my team is always invited to do the team swap party. I do a swap party with each new catalog. And speaking of signing up to be on my team, you guys, there's still a, a promotion. If anybody wants to become a Be Happy Stamper, uh, the host promotion is uh, not host promotion. The sign up promotion is you get $125 worth of product for $99 and you get to pick a free bundle. So like this nature's harvest could be a bundle that you pick to get with your, um, your starter kit. And you could sign up to become a discount shopper getting the 20% discount, or you could go full bore like I do, <laughs> which most people don't go crazy like I do. But, um, anybody's welcome to be on my team. I love, I take in everybody. <laughs> you just got to pick me as your team leader. <laughs> so, all right, you guys. Oh, Deb, you know what? You don't even live that far away, actually. I looked at the map and Tyler and I are thinking about the next little weekend getaway. We're going to go to Dubuque, Iowa. <laughs> 
<laughs> so <laughs> we don't know when that will happen, but we are, and you know, we talked about my mom, you're only like three hours away. That's not so crazy actually. <laughs> so, and um, you'll have to go visit your, um, I think your daughter, I think your daughter's in Milwaukee, not your son. I think your daughter's in Milwaukee, the one, yes, yeah, stamps. I, you're trying to get her to stamp with <laughs> more. No, your son, your son is in Milwaukee and that's your daughter-in-law. So you gotta make a trip to go visit them and come up and have a class here on a Saturday. I'm sure that your husband will be up for a road trip. So, um, and otherwise I'm gonna figure out when I can come down and visit with you with my mom <laughs> too. There's, I love shopping in Dubuque, so, all right. You guys, I think that's it. I jibber jabbered way too much there. So um, you guys enjoy the rest of your Sunday and I hope that you make it a good rest of your weekend. Make some more cards yet if, if you can. And we'll see you tomorrow night for Mystery Card Night, right? Da -da -da! All right, you guys, <laughs> lots of sunshine and love and hugs to you. We'll see you later. Bye.